welcome back to my channel. It's Marissa Explains It All. Oh my gosh, you guys. Today's video is going to be hilarious. Hopefully entertaining for you, but certainly entertaining for me. I am doing the How I Did My Makeup in High School Challenge that was going on a few years ago. This is not new. This is something that they people did like um, maybe like three or four years ago. But I have always wanted to do this because it was so tragic in high school, you guys. Like, all right, let me just like paint the picture for you. The year is 2000. <laughs> I am like 15, 14, 15, and my mom is just letting me start to wear a little bit of makeup. And of course, when I go to my friends' houses, you know, we were allowed to do whatever, and as long as we weren't going in public. So, you know, I started wearing makeup a little bit here and there and added a little bit more in as I went. But, oh my gosh, like just the... Uh, just the trends have changed so much. Like kids today, they know how to do their makeup. They know how to do a smoky eye. Kids today are doing cut creases and like winged liner and things that I just didn't even master until like a couple years ago. <laughs> so anyway, at the age, at the ripe old age of like 14, 15, I was trolling the aisles of Kmart, okay? Like Sephora wasn't a thing around here. They didn't come to my area until I think sometime when I was in college, um, and Ulta wasn't a thing around this area, so you just went to Kmart. Like, obviously, this is before they closed, but um, Kmart was like the place to go and get your drugstore makeup. And back then, I mean, I want to say like NSYNC was hot, um, you know, Bye 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 was like really popular that year. Uh, I remember Britney Spears was super popular. Everybody was like really into the Britney Spears look, um, just the tan and like the frosted lip that was really popular then. So that was really in, um, you know, how you had like TLC No Scrubs was really hot that year. Um, just some of the music, you know, that kind of influenced our generation. But anyways, I'm going to show you guys what I did and it's super tragic. So you're going to want to stick around for this. So if that interests you, <laughs> please subscribe to my channel and then I'll be right back. Okay, so first thing to be a Marissa in the year 2000 was to put your hair up, to wear your hair in some kind of weird bun that like you don't really know how it got there or what to do with your hair. So this is what it mostly looked like. I would just kind of like put it up with a scrunchie. Of course, it was still kind of the 90s and you know, even in the year 2000, it was still like 90s culture where you had the scrunchies everywhere. So I just kind of put my hair in this like weird little bun and it kind of stuck up everywhere and it wasn't really cute. So it wasn't really flattering, so that's perfect got it <laughs> then i would always wear these do y'all remember these bonnie bell lip smackers so the i don't know if it's even bonnie bell anymore the brand but this is the dr pepper one oh my gosh this was my jam i loved the dr pepper lip smacker I'm trying to like find the front of the little label for you guys but oh my gosh these were so great and they still smell like so funny, like so nostalgic. So I would always wear these, obviously, like Dr. Pepper was the thing. So I would wear those all the time and just kind of like have a little color on um, and just moisturize my lips constantly. It smells a little bit different. I wanna say, I mean, it's been like, how many years has it been? That's scary. That's too much math for today. It's been a long time, let's just say that. <laughs> so anyway, it's changed over the like, last 20 years, but that is what I would wear all the time was just this Bonnie Bell Lip Smackers. Oh, this wouldn't exist, by the way. My little red nails? No, no. Um, it was either clear or like a very light pink, like a pearlescent pink, like a baby pink. So this would not happen. And I never had fake nails. That was not a thing. Um, so, I mean, I was like 15. So my mom was trying to keep it like a little natural. So anyway. And also, I forgot to mention, I was actually homeschooled too. So I really didn't wear this look many places. I, uh, I was homeschooled from the third grade to graduation, which I loved. That was awesome. But um, I kind of wore it to church and other places. And um, of course, at my friends' houses and, you know, their, big, their um, you know, basketball games or softball games or whatever. I would wear it there. So let's start this scary tutorial so first i didn't wash my face right like so i have not washed my face i have not the like, skincare was not like a really prominent thing for me as a teen i didn't know any better i just i don't know i did not wash my face when i woke up it wasn't a thing so i mean i would wash my face in the shower obviously and like at night i would wash my face off with soap and water like bar soap and water <laughs> This is so scary. <laughs> anyway, so no wonder I had bad skin like growing up and now that I know better, it's still bad, but that's for like hormonal reasons. But anyway, so 
I just did not wash my face. There was no cleansing going on. There was no prepping. There was obviously no serums, no moisturizer, nothing like that. It was just, I woke up this way and whatever dirt, bacteria, oils on my face like happened from the night before, that's what I had on my face. So we're <laughs> starting in, I always wore CoverGirl. And so I tried to find something that was really similar to what they had back then. This is, um, it just says it's the CoverGirl like uh, clean matte. I don't know that it was a matte fin a finish back then, but I love how you can like still see like the separation <laughs> of like the oil and all the other products. Oh my gosh. Can you even see, I don't know if you can see that. It's like oil, like liquid separating from the rest of the product. <laughs> okay, so you know, I'm gonna shake it up. We're gonna, it's gonna be okay. Um, so I put this on of course and i was a classic ivory because i was very pale and i still am um but i mean who knows if this is actually my color because like color matching that was not a thing <laughs> no one color matched back then you just got as close as you could um oh man the smell is still there too i wish you guys could smell this it's like it's like paint it smells like paint yeah it's that nice like paint smell yeah that yeah i don't think they've changed much so obviously i wasn't wearing doing brushes and the beauty blender was not out yet they had beauty sponges i mean obviously you had those little wedge like white cosmetic sponges but i didn't use those <laughs> i use my fingers so i would just take it on my hands and i would just start spreading around there was no um like pre-treatment of anything there was no like color matching there was no like spot concealing color correcting there was none of that you just put it on your face and you just did like little circles and just kind of like tried to work it in um even though it really doesn't like blend as well as you would think like it should so it kind of was always like a little bit streaky i'm sure you can guys can kind of see that but um yes oh my gosh it's so funny how much like formulas have changed and like other brands, you know, make such different formulas. Um, I remember this always being like not very full coverage and it took like a while to get like to rub it in. Um, so that seems to be like still happening. I'm still getting like a bunch of streaks and the coverage is still really light, but it actually is not a terrible color for me. <laughs> I might be a little sad that I'm still classic ivory like the lightest one they have probably so let me finish getting this on here this is so scary dude y'all this does not want to blend like i cannot i'm trying to rub it in it does not blend my mom wore this for she still probably wears this my mom still probably wears this and my mom is like a saint for having homeschooled me all these years so shout out to my mom for sure but i don't know how you deal with this foundation i cannot get this to like rub in and actually set Okay, all right, so this is the best I can do to kind of like get it to set in. Um, as you can see, you can still see like all of my imperfections and blemishes. <laughs> They're all still there. Um, and it's also not like really rubbed in. Um, it just doesn't want to set in. Maybe it'll kind of set here shortly, but um, I don't remember how long it really took to dry down, but it doesn't matter because powder's coming next and I set all of it with that. Also, I didn't blend down to my neck. Not that you can really tell too much because it actually is a decent color for my skin, but I stopped here because I just did not know that like people were looking at your neck. <laughs> I didn't think that there was a line here. I never like stopped to like really turn my head and like actually like look to see. I just kind of always saw what I saw straight on. And so I was like, oh yeah, it looks good. It looks fine. It's, it's all good. All right, so then I knew that I had some spots to conceal, right? And so I did actually use a concealer, but I used this like stick type of concealer, this like um, waxy type of crayon. This one actually is the um, Maybelline cover stick. And it's like this waxy weird crayon that really, I don't think it really should be used like on top of your foundation necessarily. And it's certainly not as good as like a liquid, um, you know, concealer, but I would take this and did I use it under my eyes? No, I didn't. That's where you're supposed to use concealer. <laughs> I used it on my spots. And so I would actually just like use it on my red spots to kind of conceal, um, which, you know, you really should color conceal for that. <laughs> color correct rather. Uh, with a different color, but anyway, it's fine. That's what I did. So anytime I had acne, I, which was all the time, I would uh, put this on and then just sort of like buff that out. 
and you know sometimes it worked pretty well sometimes it didn't sometimes you'd see like really awesome little like white spots that just didn't like rub in and sometimes i would do this type of number where i would rub it away completely and it wouldn't really actually work at all and that's what happened <laughs> This is a tragic story, let me just tell you. All right, so then after I was done trying to conceal my acne that really wasn't gonna be concealed, um, then I went in pretty hard with a uh, powder. So this was the CoverGirl, this is the Clean CoverGirl Clean Powder. And of course, I used the little thing that came with it because that's what you do. Like, there's no brushes that exist. <laughs> Makeup brushes were not a thing. Oh my gosh, this powder. It's got like a perfume smell to it and it is so nostalgic. It's like this paint smell from this uh, liquid mixed with like a perfume. Amazing, amazing. All right, so I would take this and I would just like go in pretty hard with this um, just because I don't know why, to be honest with you. Like, I don't think anybody really told me why I was doing it. I just thought that that's what you did. You dug in really, really tough with it, like really hard with it and you just drug it all over and obviously I didn't pat it, I just drug it. So you would drag this all over and of course didn't cover anything because <laughs> I mean it covered a little bit but um, at this point it would actually kind of rub some of my makeup off. I remembered that happening too and I was like never sure why but uh, yeah I would always just kind of like take this like uh, little thing and rub the stuff all over and powder was done. Powder is good. And then of course it was time to go on to cheeks. And so I did uh, use CoverGirl. I was like a CoverGirl queen. Like this was my brand. I don't know why. I think probably because it was cheaper and it's what I could afford. But um, I had the CoverGirl cheekers. Okay. So they still sell this, which is great. I love this. And it came with like the little applicator thing. It's still in the package. <laughs> and so, you know, I used this little thing and these brushes like, oh my gosh. Okay. It's not good. All right, so I would take this and just take some of the product and I think I can go in pretty hard with this because it doesn't really cover, yeah. Like I just dipped in really hard and you really can't really see it. So I'm gonna go in again and I would just do like a streak like this kind of. Yeah, let me get some in there. Yep, that looks about right. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of blending that needed to happen. It was really just kind of a streak of blush and yeah, that was pretty much it. I think I did like, yeah, probably like that. That's probably good. Yeah. So that was that. I had my blush on and there was no highlighter. At this point, obviously I would do a highlight. The highlighter wasn't a thing back then. And then neither were brows. So. These were just all natural. Um, I didn't even comb them really. Like I didn't like brush them back. I didn't do anything with my brows. People just didn't like pay attention. I don't think to in the nineties to brows or maybe early two thousands. Um, they plucked them really thin. Like they just, you know, we would wax them or something, but really didn't fill them in. They didn't shape them. They just kind of left them as is. And so, you know, I've got like some patchy bra, you know, patchiness here and you know, just some strays here. And that's what it was done with brows <laughs> and then of course I went on to um, eyeshadow and for eyeshadow I feel like I would do like blue like a light blue look and almost look like Mimi from Drew Carey but like not that head not as heavy but that color like kind of shade <laughs> so scary but usually the most of the time what I would do is I would put like a really white shade on the bottom and I actually did find a um, like a wet and wild palette that has some of the shades that I would wear um, I really liked like purple lavender was like my my whole favorite color back then and so what I would do is I would take like oh by the way I couldn't find like one of those little sponge like um, eyeshadow applicators those little disposable ones anywhere in my house like I just don't have any so uh, I don't even know if they still sell them I'm assuming they do um, so I would just use my fingers anyway like I didn't always have an applicator so I would take this white white color like the whitest color and and obviously and if it was shimmer even better like white shimmer was the best and so I would just take that and pack that on to the lid area and then after that was done, I I feel like sometimes I would e I would even wear like a white eyeliner. I, f I remember that like vaguely that being a look where you'd wear white here um, just to like I don't know brighten up this area or something. I don't know what I was doing. 
no, obviously no one taught me how to do this. <laughs> this was all in my own head of my own doing. And when I looked at pictures, I thought I looked so cute. So something happened there. So yep, I would just take this and pack it on over. And I did not put it in the brow bone. Like there was no brow bone highlight. It was mainly just like really bright white like lids. I'm really trying to get this like level of intensity with this Wet n Wild palette. So I would do that and just smear it on. And then I would do like a pink color, um, like a plum color. Maybe I'll try this one or maybe this like, I don't know, lavender one. So I would do like a lavender all over the like crease. I'm gonna have to use the other one. So I would do this lavender shade like all over this kind of like top area and even up into the brow bone, to be honest with you. Like I didn't really discriminate. There was like not a separate zone for me. <laughs> like the brow bone was not like a separate place where that was supposed to have a different color. Like it was just all up there. <laughs> so, so I brought this all the way up. Yeah, yeah, that's looking good. That is what I would do. And I would just wear like this shade. Let me see how this plum looks. Yeah, I would actually even go like a little darker of a, like a plum color sometimes uh, if I wasn't doing the blue obviously yeah that looks nice and then after I did that it would be time for eyeliner so scary guys I can't even right now so eyeliner I didn't know how to do liquid liner that was like out completely out so I found a CoverGirl pencil, um, similar to what I would use. And it's just like one of those that you kind of sharpen and <laughs> it's not going to be good. You guys, it's not going to be good. So I didn't know how to really do like a thin line. I got it as thin as I could, but it ended up looking really thick because it's really hard to get a thin line anyway with, you know, like this type of a crayon, um, pencil. And I just, I just didn't know. So I would start and try to draw a line. I would go in and just draw a nice thick black line without really like stretching my eye even. I really just tried to like, just do whatever was there. I didn't stretch or anything. And I didn't actually extend past my eye at all. I just stopped like right there at the very end. I would just stop there because I didn't know what a cat I was at the time. I don't think that was like really a popular thing. So yeah, that looks about right. <laughs> we'll do the other side. Okay. All right, that is what that would look like. Um, I feel like it looked even worse than this back in the day, but I think I, don't, I can't make it look any worse to be honest with you. <laughs> And then for lashes, I actually did use a decent lash product. Um, I did find the L'Oreal Voluminous um, cur Curved Brush, and, or the Voluminous Formula, and I really liked this. I remember this being like a really big hit, and um, it, had, it was like one of the first kind of curved brushes, applicators, and my friends all liked it a lot. So they actually would like want to borrow it and stuff, which is like, you know, unsanitary, but um, they loved this product. And to be honest, I don't hate this product. I think um, I would wear this like, every day probably. So this is the one thing that I think I did okay with, but I also didn't really know to do multiple coats and I, I haven't really ever done a, like a eyelash curler. So, you know, I never really did that. But, um, and for some reason, I don't know why I never coated my bottom lashes. That just wasn't something that I did. I don't, I don't, I just ignored them. I was like, bottom lashes don't need to be coated. They just need to be left alone. So <laughs> I would just do the top here one coat on the top and then comes the fun part lips and so because i just didn't do many much more than one coat um and i just didn't really like have a i don't know i just didn't really know how, what to do it didn't really look like I, I was ever wearing mascara because i don't really have very curved lashes but so this was that that was it that was that and then of course lipstick. Okay, so back then like frosted lips were everything. And so I was trying to find one and I found a CoverGirl and this one is in the shade 770. Doesn't even have a name, but, um, and it's like this type of like, I was really into this like cappuccino type colors. Um, probably like way too dark for my skin to be honest with you my skin tone but i was really into like these frosted like coffee cappuccino rum raisin type flight um, shades and this one actually looks like it is um really light it's not very dark which is probably good <laughs> but we're gonna see so 
I would just take this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would usually wear a little bit darker than that, uh, which wasn't a good thing, but. <laughs> so we layer that on, cause like, you didn't just do like a simple, like one swipe, you like layered it, right? To really get it in there. Mm-hmm. Look at that frost, <laughs> that shine. <laughs> Yeah, and then there was no setting spray, and so, yeah, this is it. I think this kind of completes the, um, my make my high school, like, makeup portion. Let me zoom you guys in. So, obviously, you don't want to be zoomed in right now, probably this close, but I just had to show you how much, like, things aren't concealed. You can still see through. There's, like, bright pops of color that really aren't blended out. <laughs> Like my, nothing's really covered. It stops at my neck. Um, really scary kind of uh, unblended eyeshadow type of look. Eyebrows aren't done. Obviously acne's still showing through. So this was, this was the makeup look that I, that I went for. I don't know why. And then of course, back then you had like the chokers like this one. So they had these chokers that were more like the, um, those black stretchy ones that has like all the little like squirrels or squigglies on it. Squirrels. <laughs> they have all the squigglies on it. So this was a thing, of course, like we did like, um, you know, the black stretchy choker was a whole look. And then I got to show you guys the hair because the hair was probably one of my favorite parts. And I, I would also wear like t-shirts. So I wanted to be so like athletic. I wanted the athletic look like my friends were. My friends were into like softball and volleyball and cheerleading and even um, wrestling. I think one of my friends was into wrestling. So um, I just was like, wanted to be athletic so bad. And I was not, I am not skilled in any sport. <laughs> Sports are not my thing, but I always wanted to be right. And so the look back then of course was like flared jeans, which I can't, I couldn't find. I don't fit into any of my flared jeans anymore. So being like 18 sizes bigger than I was in high school, but <clears throat> I was a double zero in high school. Actually, I was very like a bean pole. And so I had like flare jeans or like, like bell bottoms, just that really like open leg jean. And then I would also wear like um, Abercrombie and Fitch or like, well, secondhand, like thrift store <laughs> Abercrombie and Fitch um, or like Aeropostale type of clothes. Um, whenever Aeropostale did run a sale, like we would try to go and get some clothes firsthand, but usually it was like thrift store stuff. So anyways, I was always wearing like bright orange or like red shirt um, or, and then like the jeans. And then I would also wear like visors for some reason, like that half visor thing was in. <laughs> Y'all, it was the whole thing. This is, I am so glad none of this like exists in my, my wardrobe right now. But I do have to show you the hair because we were so proud of our hair skills with these little clips and I couldn't find the exact ones. But do you guys remember like these little butterfly clips? <laughs> I found these on Amazon. These one have um, like little rhinestones in them, which I didn't really have back then. They were just solid clips, but this is all I could find. So we had all these like multicolored um, hair, like little butterfly clips. And we also had the kind of butterfly clips that like bounce when you um, like move them. They had like movable wings that would flap. So that was my whole jam. I was like obsessed with these little clips. So I'm gonna show you guys like what we did in 1999 and 2000 when we did our hair. So first it was all about the middle part. So you have to get like a nice middle part going on, right? So already it's looking a little scary. But, and then after that, you would always leave out like some wispies. You would either leave out like some face framing things here, or I would leave them out like down here, like down like lower like that. And so I don't know, I'll probably pick somewhere in the middle today, but like somewhere along the temple, I would like to, <laughs> this is so sad dude. Like I cannot be alone when I like with this, like you guys probably, you've got to remember this, right? Like this has got, this is not just me that did this. I know it was a whole, like whole generation. So even though this is slightly embarrassing, at least I wasn't alone. Like this is what was in back then. Okay, so now that you got your wispies out, your little face framing pieces, then you would do the little, um, like little rolls, like little twists up here. So you would do like five or six of these and you would section off piece of hair and just like roll and twist and twist until you got like a nice little look going on. And then you would do your like little first clip. Your clip would go here. Like even higher, I think like, yes. Okay. All right. Let me finish the rest of these. 
Okay, so you could leave it here, right? You could just leave it and let, let the rest of your hair down and just keep your like nice little like rolled clip, you know, rolled hair with clips. And actually I didn't even like roll them as tight as I used to. I can't really, I've lost my skill to like roll as tight, um, but you could do that and just leave it here or you could keep going, which is what my friends and I chose to do. <sighs> so we would take the rest of our hair and we would like put it up in like two like little twists basically, like two little um, knobs kind of like this. And then we would also put more clips in. So let me do that. Yeah, this is about looking like what it was. And so then if anything was out of place or moved too much, you just clip it down with a butterfly clip. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. You just like, you clip it down. <laughs> So obviously you needed like hundreds of these things to like really uh, get the look, but this was pretty much it. I don't even know like what this look was inspired by. I guess like a lot of girls back then were wearing this like, um, I don't know, I feel like I've seen Drew Barrymore or I don't know, some other pop stars wearing this type of look back then. But yeah, it was a little bit wild. Like it was a little bit, you know, kind of spiky, um, but you just put some gel in the tips, you know, to get that to like stay up. Yeah, this was pretty much it. This is exactly what we would do, and oh, who knows why. I don't know how this got to be popular. I don't know why this was a thing, but this was pretty much the look where we were like, we are cute, we are ready to go out in our little 14-year-old selves and like walk around the block or whatever we were doing, <laughs> ride our bikes or whatever. This was it, so you guys. It's been a glow up, I know. It's been a glow up for the last like, you know, 20 years, but I feel like we all have those times where we started out like this and you know, it was a look back then. I can say it was like at least nostalgic to kind of think back to high school times. Um, but anyway, let me know what you guys think. Um, what other trends can you think of from the time that you were in high school? What was popular when you went to school? Uh, just leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. I'm always interested in like looking back at other decades and what style choices they had and fashion and makeup and what things were, you know, in the past decades. So this is representative of the year 2000. So hopefully you guys can at least somewhat relate. So subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. I hope you guys had a good time and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Oh boy, okay. Oh yes, this is it. This is memories. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm gonna have to throw this in the trash. This is gone. It's just like, it shouldn't smell like paint. Oh, oh boy, that's, that's too much. Boom ba ba do ba da ba do ba ba do ba da ba do ba.